the court plea was out of it. In those decisions, the law was still in the balance between the right to society and the men's accused of crime. The peace forces must not be denied the legal tools they need to protect innocent people from criminal forces. But as great constitutional lawyers, they are dedicated to the lawyers at the same time, to the lawyers' most precious principles, that the rights of innocent men must always receive the full protection of the law. It's these criteria of mind that I suggest that you do that. The names are the set of the set of the law. It's these criteria of mind that I suggest that you do that. The names are the set of the set of the law. Powell, Mr. So-and-so, are the best qualified men, the best qualified individuals I can find for these two appointments. They will add distinction and excellence in the highest degree to this great judicial body. I am asking the Senate to approve their nominations promptly, so that the court can move forward on the backlog of the good and not the best of the two things. Let me add a final word with regard to a subject that is very close to my heart because of my legal background, because of my years of study of the American system. Not all of the great American victims, but every individual has the right to disagree with the decisions of the court. And after those decisions are handed down, it is our obligation to obey the law, whether we like it or not. And it is our duty as citizens to respect the institution of the Supreme Court of the United States. We have had many debates over the years on the role of the Supreme Court, and some of those debates have even ended up in our conflict. Let us never forget that respect for the court, the final interpretation of what is the law of the land, is indispensable for Americans to survive in a free society. Whether we agree or disagree with the views of members of that court, let us always hold in highest respect what is, in my view, the greatest judicial body of last resort in the entire world. Except for the contribution we can make to the cause of world peace, there is probably no more important legacy that the President can leave in these times than his appointment to the Supreme Court of the United States. I believe that Chief Justice Byrd and Mr. Justice Black, by their conduct and their decisions, have earned the respect not only of those who supported them at the time they nominated them, but also of those who either opposed them or were moved beyond their appointments. It is my firm conviction that the two men whose names I am sending to the Senate tomorrow will deserve the same respect that all Americans do proudly that they were diligently on behalf of their overriding responsibility, guardians of our Constitution, and that they respect for the law in order to make justice in the law. To be just, I think this sort of thing is a kind of a thing that we're just here to get the shit out of the world. Well, I think I've been talking about it for a while. Well, good. Do you think we've got a lot of love, then? Yes, it's the greatest love. But on the other hand, it's a, I say some things here that need to be said. God damn it, I don't have a double standard. I respected Black. I went to his goddamn funeral. Why don't they have respect for some of our guys? That's right. Huh? That's exactly right. That's what I say. The liberals have a double standard. They get cute about this. At least under no circumstances is the burden of the informant in advance. By the same token, I think Mitchell should not tell Walsh under any circumstances for fear of a leak. I guess desperately afraid of a leak. Nobody should be notified before 7 o'clock, right? 